happened then? It, Be wasn't, honest. it wasn't me, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got Douglas there on the left playing that Arceus V-Star box. I mean, there is a lot of stuff in that deck which we'll get to, but the superior V-Star there as well, who is no stranger to the LAIC, because in LAIC 2019, we got a top 128. But he will be facing uh, Duke, uh, Duncan, uh, who's playing Mew. So coming up from my heart there, that Mew deck. Um, so that's going to make it very interesting. It's almost like a very old match that we see, right? Mew into Arceus. So I'm excited to see how this pans out. Let's look at these prize cards then. So Duncan has prized a box of disaster, a boss of orders, a cram, and one path. And then Douglas there has prized an Arc V star. Uh, well, two Arc V stars, actually, sorry. Ooh, a bit of as well. What? So that is that. bad luck. Thankfully, they do play three, but it is a bit crucial for this kind of box style deck, obviously one of my favorite styles, um, to get your consistency Pokemon out into play. And for uh, for Douglas here, that is that Arceus V-Star and the V-Barrel. Yeah, so let's have a little talk then about why this is an Arc box deck. What 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 is in uh, Douglas's deck to make this um, a box? Well, there is a 1-1 one, one Giratina V-Star, so we have to keep an eye on that. We'll know how strong Lost Impact can be. There is a Mew EX as well, so it, I mean, it is possible to attack with that under the right scenarios with that like genome hacking. There's obviously the 1-1 one, one Superior V-Star there as well. Mostly there for its uh, last hyping, that Regal Blender is 190, I believe. Mm -hmm. And if we also see the card that Duncan has to worry about, that one copy of Drapion. Yes, always very terrifying to the Mew Max player. Uh, although they have Box of Disaster, it is not a box deck in its own right. Starting off with Douglas's turn, it looks like we are going in heavy with some ball search there. Straight into the deck, and thankfully for Douglas, they did begin with their Arceus V. Arceus V does have decent attacks that can be utilized early on. However, we are ultimately wanting to get into that V-Star, which could be troublesome. So Douglas is going to be spending a little while here checking on where on earth their V-Stars have got to. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to put a lot of pressure on finding Ultra Ball, right? Because now you, you sort of really have limited options into drawing into the Arceus V-Star. Um, as Douglas does have an Ultra Ball in hand, actually, so might have a get out of jail free card there. But I tell you what, uh, if you're Douglas and you're staring across from a Genesect, you have no clue, you know, is there going to be a matter of barreling down on me turn one, right? You know, uh, which yeah. can be terrifying. But luckily for uh, Douglas, um, he doesn't, uh, Duncan, or Duncan, I should say, is playing a DTE version of me. So there will be no turn one pressure. No, thankfully there are no Meloetas to help out these breakdance and Genesects. Not on this occasion, <laughs> but, you know, Douglas doesn't know that. Wow, we're seeing the Ultra Ball being played here. So this is going to have to target an Arc V-Star, surely, unless you're going to rely on your V-Star. But I guess, actually, because Douglas uh, isn't to know that this isn't a fusion, you kind of have to put down two Arc Vs, uh, two Arc Vs, because if you wasn't and then you got hit by a Meloetta, you now have no Arc V Oh. in play to evolve into the caraman getting that nice shot that deck box for you there did you hear yeah. <laughs> how oh, happy you got oh, so cute <laughs> it really <laughs> took me so surprised. surprise they did that on purpose as well they let Amy all took this cute and we are going for Muse ability uh -oh. there an empty hand but drawing three we've got a double turbo and then just a lost city but the lost city is going down okay I think you kind of have to put it down so you can try and draw more off that restart yeah. ability Right over to Duncan, who starts off the turn with a nest ball and going to have his own time to prize check here as well. Now, the 4 DTE version is more streamlined in the sense that your turn ones are just focused on getting as many movies and as many Genesect as possible. You haven't got to worry about you know, trying to weave in Meloetta or anything like this. Oh, and Duncan does play the full art Mew. That's my favorite one right there. That is, the um, colors. That is some boss Mew. That is a beautiful art. There's so many there's so many different arts of this Mew, but they all impress. Yeah, I mean that crown Zenith one to the left there, I think's gorgeous as well. You know, feel the colours again. Oh I love their Mew V Max me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, back over to Duncan Sam. What is in that hand actually? I see a switch, I see a path. I don't actually see Oh, we see some Ooh, judge. Okay. Justifies gloves. That's unfortunately not relevant in this matchup, but I've seen a lot more Mew players playing it this weekend, and I can definitely justify why. A hey, with hey. um with so much Charizard and Roaring Moon running around rampant. Yeah, well I guess in this matchup actually, 
Um, it means that if uh, do, uh, Douglas was going to attack with a Drapion, it does mean that you won't need to find a power tablet to KO the Drapion. You can just use a Justify Club, which could be easier because you can just leave it, leave it attached and then not have to worry about it ever again. Now, Justify Club's doing an extra 30 to your Dark types that you hit into. And looking at the um, Duncan there, again, get two Mu Vs as well, so three Mu Vs in totality. But a lost vacuum away that Lost City. And then going to start the turn off there with a Fusion Strike system for four new cards. Going to find a DTE, a Forest Seal Stone, and was that a Switch as well? So a ton of other cards, a lot to go off. And a Cramomatic as well. And let's see what he chooses to do. Does attach that energy there? And just debating on what to do. Probably don't. I don't think you can do anything else there apart from attach that Forest Seal Stone. Maybe you could use that to find a Battle VIP pass. And they are going to see that cram, in case you don't know, discard the item. If you flip a coin of head, you get to search any card from your deck. Whoa, off the tip. Excited there, Duncan. <laughs> Here we go again. Oh, oh no. no. Probably going to have to use that Star Alchemy now for a Battle VIP pass to get some more Genesex into play. Yeah, Genesect has the most fantastic ability in the Pokemon TCG in a while, in my opinion. I think it's absolutely ferocious. Being able to control your card draw like that is essential. So they've gone ahead and used an early Forest Seal Stone. It's never really what Mew wants to be using a Forest Seal Stone for, but it's a nice get-out clause in case of this scenario. Yeah. And luckily, we've got two more Genesect out, so Duncan can consistently draw up to six cards in their hand multiple times in their turn. They've got an empty hand right now, so we get the full six. Yep. Great feeling as a mute as he does find a battle for our P plus there, unfortunately. Um, and we're going to get crammed away immediately, though. Donkey! Yay! Ray! There you go. Law of averages, you know, 50 50. So over two, two flips, one of them goes in your favor. Now, I'm intrigued to see what this targets because Duncan doesn't know that Douglas plays a uh, Drapion. It's not. It's not something, I mean, it's something you can see in Arc decks, but it's not like, you know, it's super. It's not typical, is it? Yeah, it's not typical. So I'm intrigued to see what that targets. And yeah. then what also what Duncan chooses to leave in the active as well, because if he leaves a DTE in the active, that could be disastrous. It could. So there we go. We're just going for the one. And then, yeah, you're always going to end the turn by retreating, preserving your DTE. Now, are we going to see that path to the peak come down? We yeah. are. Now, this, this could be interesting. Oh, no, Douglas actually did have the Arc V-Star. But can't you star birth now? <gasps> oh, I wonder whether it w might have been great to have held on to that lost city just a little while longer. Well, you got judged though, right? Oh. So yeah. But at least it would still be in deck, I suppose. So I guess you can still evolve and attach it to the active. That's interesting. And then gonna potentially play that boss to try and store. Ah, there we go. Genesex is slightly notoriously difficult to retreat. They have two retreat cost, and Duncan is going to need to find a switch option or a double turbo energy, but maybe that feels a bit wasteful. Well, it's interesting. Dun Duncan's got a few options. That's an escape rope as well, which he opts to play. So that's basically saying that Duncan is essentially going to take two prize cards. It's actually risky, because if you promote the Arc V-Star, it's harder for Duncan to KO, but then you but then you sort of give up your only attacker. So I think, yeah, you kind of have to give up the Mew EX there. We see two Mews staring down each other. Mm. So one of them's got a little bit more HP and a, a lot more damage. <laughs> Quite a lot more HP. Oh my goodness gracious. Poor Mew. Off they go. They said there could only be one. <laughs> and uh, one of Douglas's Pokemon goes to the discard pile to kick this round 11 off with Duncan taking two prize cards. Yeah, we see that Judge Par from Dun uh, Duncan at least immediately sticking. But Douglas can at least use Trinity Nova now. 200 damage will be 180 after that DTE. And lets you attach three basic energies from your deck and attach them to your V Pokemon in any way you like. Now, I'm intrigued to see where these goes. Uh, where these go, I should say. Does it go on a Giratina V? Does it go on the other Arc V? And it looks like we're going to see a Psychic and a Grass onto Giratina V and then one Psychic onto the Arc V as well. So you can sort of try and hedge your bets and attack with them no matter what Duncan chooses to do. Now... Yeah. I wonder if Duncan, or oh, does actually top deck the um, Lost Vacuum there, so can opt to remove this path to the peak and draw some cards, or he can just choose to keep up this path a lot. What do you think you would do? I think I would leave the path for now. I think you've achieved what you need to for the moment, and I don't think it's worth 
getting rid, but then I am <laughs> on the desk and Duncan is down here playing and they're Duncan's going, no. so perfectly tight. They're going, no, <laughs> no, I need to draw some more cards, which is, again, perfectly reasonable. I just think Duncan was in a really strong spot there and could have potentially left it so that uh, Douglas absolutely was unable to starve Earth once again. But with Muse draw, draw power, I think there's a high possibility of them getting another one down. So there's a world. Duncan's already played one power tablet. Only needs to find two more damage modifiers to actually KO this Arc V star. So I kind of like the getting rid of the path to the P. You can sort of say, well, I've denied your star birth now. So now I'm going to deny your star birth just by KOing your Arc V star. That seems to be the play. And if you can reestablish path to the peak lock as well, that would be the icing on the cake, as it were. So now Duncan can start to fusion. I for a full six again. We're looking for damage modifiers here. There's Path to the Peak, Featherball, Judge, Pow Pad. Choice. There's one modifier. Oh, we we're go. getting close. We're getting close. <laughs> and Choice Belt obviously only works on V Pokemon. So that is, these are all valid targets, but not throughout the tournament will they have found a kind of exclusive use for Choice Belt in every matchup. But mm. this one. Nah, this matchup is free game. We can use our choice belts. We don't have to attach them to something silly just to get them out of our hand. Do you see that feather ball now being played? Let's you search your deck for any Pokemon with a free retreat cost and put it in your hand. In this deck, that targets all the Mew V and all the Mew V Max as well. So let's see what Duncan chooses to take. Could actually opt to just take a V Max and evolve. That yeah. will deny any um, psychic leap now. So that's something to keep in mind. There will be no psychic leap options, at least for now. But I think when you're trying to search for that one modifier to potentially close this game out early, that might be the way to go. As Duncan there also plays a power pad to shuffle in. Looks like going to be Roxanne and a judge, or just a Roxanne, I should say. I think going aggressive here is the way to go. Yeah. You've limited your opponent's board stay down to three Pokemon. Oh. Yeah, they have energy, but neither are fully evolved. Oh. Um, a bit of a fumble there, but not one that we not one that we can't pick up and get on with. The judges seem okay. okay. The judges seem okay with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all right. Um, it happens. We all get a bit fumbly and sweaty during uh, during these tournaments when there's so much pressure. But yeah, I think going aggressive here is the right call personally. A psychic leap isn't going to KO any of Douglas's Pokemon, so I don't know if it's worth considering when Duncan's in such a strong spot. However, Duncan is obviously none the wiser that there is a Drapion lurking. <laughs> and that is lurking. We do see another Fusion Strike system. Show us the modifier. Oh, yeah, oh, the last card! The last, the last card! Oh, so now with those three modifiers, two power tablets and that choice belt, that means that bench Mew V Max and reestablishes <gasps> path block as an oh, judge as well. Whoa. Oh my goodness, Donkey! That is the play for a Mew V Max deck, right? We want to see judge path, disruption, and no abilities for you, sir. Wow, that okay, this has potentially be a very strong turn. If if um, Douglas doesn't draw much off this judge, this game could start to get out of hand. And let's see what uh Duncan can draw here as well. Anything you draw here, just icing on the cake, really. Let's have a look. Oh, uh -oh. Douglas no. hasn't drawn much. That doesn't look fantastic. Ideally, what Douglas was looking for, some out to that path to the peak, and maybe even just a Drapion just to be able to catch back up again. Yes, we are going to see the Techno Blast for KO with the two power tablets oh. and the choice part. There's exactly 280, and it looks like Douglas... Uh, Douglas, I should say, sorry, has a nest ball, so could have got the... Wait, you can go nest ball and then lost vacuum away the path to the peak and Drapion can come down for the KO here. Is that what he's going to choose to do? Possibly. The double turbo energy does kind of infer that that's going to happen because they're able to get that free retreat. Oh, is that a squavet? <gasps> they're going to go for the... They can't go for the nest dash. No. I guess the problem with using the Drapion here is that... Oh, that's our Squabbit with Nestash. Look at it with his little berries. Once your turn, during your turn, you can shuffle your hand and put it on the bottom of your deck and draw one. Yeah, draw one. I guess the, the sort of issue with going for the Drapion here is that Duncan, uh, Duncan's only on two prize cards. So all he has to do is just KO that Drapion to win. And, that, while, and while that Drapion is so strong, so that Wild Star means it can attack for one less colorless energy for each Fusion Strike, Rapid Strike, or Single Strike Pokemon your opponent has in play. And, and that Dynamic Tail does 190 damage, which with weakness KOs and UV Max for no energy. Whoa! Oh, so there th we wow. go. Unfortunately, yes, there was no way around it. 
not being able to close out the game when Duncan was already on two prize cards left. And uh, yeah, I, I totally agree that this was unfortunately the way to go with that. Move on to the next game. Give us plenty of time to try and close out a best of three. And yeah, there we just see that age old re equalizer of Judge and Path to the Peak. Judge limiting your opponent's options and Path to the Peak, just turning off all those wall box abilities, denying that star birth there for Douglas. I mean, basically saying, you're not going to get involved in the game. I'm just going to keep swinging for KOs over yeah. and over and over again. And Duncan is currently one game up here in the Swiss round 11. Yeah, we'll see whether Douglas has held their cards close enough to their chest to keep the secrets of their box style deck alive enough because maybe that element of surprise could throw Duncan off this time. Keeping that, I think keeping that Drapion secret True. is really huge. It didn't hit the discard pile. They didn't search for it. It wasn't prized, but they chose to keep it a secret knowing that it wasn't going that way and revealing a squab it instead maybe is just the better way to go about it or maybe even failing that search would have been okay as well um, if they were deciding whether to scoop it up. We do see here a quick replay there. We saw the turn one there from Dun uh, Duncan being able to flood the board. We saw that sort of that defense uh, boss was always trying to stall Duncan, but Duncan was having none of it. Immediately found an escape rope, took two prize cards, then was to immediately eject that Arc V star with a combination of three damage modifiers. As we are going to see, it was this turn here when Duncan even managed to weave in a judge and a path to the peak as well, just for good measure. And yeah, there we go, see the three damage modifiers, second time with 280. And that was pretty much all she wrote after that. I mean, sure, the, the screw bit Nesh Dash might have been able to get a supporter, but unfortunately, it did not. And the Douglas is going to have to be shuffling up here for game two. Yeah, haste makes waste. Douglas knew that it wasn't going to continue to go their way. And Duncan had unfortunately done new things yeah. and got all set up far too quickly. So it looks like players are setting up here. Look at the prize cards again. Douglas only prize one arc V star. Uh, Duncan has prized two copies of Judge and one copy of Forest Seal Stone, one Cram, a Path, and Battle VIP Pass. So I think the prize advantage there probably goes to Douglas. Um, and let's see what Douglas can do to start this game. Has led that one copy of Scrove. It has an arc V on the bench as well. Ooh, bench is Bidoof as well. Who needs a Battle VIP Pass, eh? He even has a second arc V as well if he chooses to place it in, well into play. I like to see the Badoof this time being able yeah. to get yeah. uh, consistent hands, I think will help a lot. And again, we, it's something we didn't see last game. I think it's definitely easy to infer that you have Bibaral in the deck if the Squawfit uh, yeah, shows sure. its sweet little face. <laughs> <laughs> Those chubby <laughs> cheeks are hiding no secrets. Sweet little face. Look at the production stuff put up there for you as well. <laughs> Sweet. Look, at, look, at the, look at the innocence. Look at him. Well, we saw the screw with the barrel combo come in clutch on some past regionals, right? Yeah. I, mean, I think it was responsible for a regional victory. Mm -hmm. So It's a fantastic combination. Being able to put the cards that you don't want directly to the bottom of your deck, draw one, and then continue drawing up to five, potentially even after having played that one card, so it really gives the deck a lot more maneuverability. Oh, are we seeing the turn one Nest Dash? Yeah, I think because they want to use Restart for Mew, maybe. So What's a that? Nest Dash and then Restart to be able to grab different cards. Was the hand that bad, though? Because <laughs> now this Restart, this has to be a good free card from staying in the game. I mean, and Oh, oh he's got the big barrel, nice, though. The wow. Wow. Woo. To tell you what, Douglas, there's a risk taker. I, I would not I, have done that, but he I finds wouldn't. himself in round 11 in day two of international. You and I'm what? sat here talking about oh, it. So. Shay, <laughs> I've got to disagree with you. I would have done that. I think that's a great idea. At the end of the day, even if the hand was bad, they can still nest dash again and restart on the next turn. So you're actually yeah. drawing more like kind of seven or eight cards yeah, rather than just the three. I, I think that was, I like that move. I liked it. I like the way that Mew moves. <laughs> I was literally just about to say that, and you beat me to it. Well I done. I nicked your line. I'm sorry. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so we have a nest ball there for Duncan. Going to get a Duncan, I should say, and a feather ball. So that's going to grab a Genesect and a Mew V as well. That nice full art one as well. And then just to fire gloves. Doesn't know. That's going to not going to be super relevant. So you're going to ultra ball that away in combination with boss's orders. And that's probably going to find what another Genesect, if I had to guess. And let's see what Duncan chooses. Let's have a look and see. Having a bit of a laugh. See. 
It's going to be a nice Fusion Strike system for five, I think, at I least. I think right? you're yeah, right, five. yeah. And honestly, we saw last game that those sorts of card draw moments were just huge. They just got him everything he needed to get set up so consistently and continue to just put the pressure on Douglas. Now, one thing we're going to have to keep an eye on here is that Duncan's managed to fill his bench without having to use Battle of Our So That means they're all still in the deck. So he might draw into them now at an inopportune moment. Does have a cram. We're going to have to get rid of a switch for this. Big dive for here. Look at this. Look at this camera angle for that. Oh, my Whoa. goodness. And it was a two. Wow. Look at the zoom as well. Woo. These cameramen have been so good today. Let's go. <laughs> well, and yesterday as well. Oh, they know where to put the drama on. It's on those coin flips because really that's the only thing that can leave Mew in a bit of a sticky situation. But even then, if you've got Genesis on the board, who cares? Because you're going to be able to draw loads of cards. This is true, but Dunk, uh, Dunkin Ooh. might be saying, hold on, let me do the yeah. old judge path combination again. Because we got two Mew VMAX in hand right now, and it, d does Duncan really want that? I mean, oh, I, I couldn't see what he took there, but um, yeah, you probably want to try and draw a little bit more. So I, don't, I wouldn't actually mind a judge here, so I limit your opponent. But again, you, you did just see your opponent go nest dash plus restart, so um, it was a path to the peak. So we're going to draw two cards there off the Fusion Strike system, Ooh, a Skate Rope and a and cram. cram. You might want to hold cram on to that Cram. So matic You might want to hold on to that so you can have an out to the path if you choose to put it down. Let's see if Duncan does choose to put it down. Might actually want to just hold since you Ooh. haven't got a guaranteed stage amount. I think, from, I think I like the just taking your time with Mew here. Like you said last time, moving that Mew with the energy back onto the bench to protect it and then taking it easy. They <laughs> are going for the buff. Ooh, I like the aggressive play. Okay. They're, they're saying, I don't think you have a B barrel. I think you're going to need to use restart again. But yep, Douglas proves them wrong, and here's a B barrel load of fun. So here we're going to see industrious and sizes for four. Oh, no, it's going to be five. Oh, no, it will be still be four. After the nest, dash draws one. Whoa. After the peak, can't <laughs> play that. <laughs> it just is a big industrious. <gasps> oh, 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 Would he find a stage amount, though? No. It's not. No, two stadiums, but the wrong stadium. The wrong stadium. We don't want that. And I guess that's an interesting scenario as we do see that Superior oh, V for the first time. Yeah. Look, look, look at that attack name, Noble Light. Beautiful. But I think, is that going to have to be a pass? It is. Mm -hmm. The Scrover has to stay in the active, and Duncan now has a turn. Oh. To try and increase the tempo. Could after could go after that arc V star, but I think the turn's gonna start off with that um that cram to oh. try and replace that stadium. Like the Mew V Max cramming cramming matting away a pal pattern. Will we get results? No! Oh, it was a three. Now this is this is what I was worried about putting the path down. Now you can't really do a great deal apart from just swinging to the active. Not the greatest. No, taking one prize card on the Squavit kind of skews the prize yeah, trade for does. Duncan. Yeah. Duncan's gonna be wanting to take three sets of two prizes. Whereas Douglas is obviously going to try their best to go for two larger knockouts and take three prizes and then a second set of three prizes, especially where Duncan doesn't really play any single prize options. The best yeah. prize map to go for Douglas is two Mew Max win the game. Yeah, you are correct. There's two shot. One of the oh, two oh, here he is. I guess it makes sense if you are going to go for Trinity Nova this turn, you want something to attach them to. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, Zephyria's attacks aren't awful. They're not great into Mew, but 190, what does that kill, Shay? What does that kill, Shay? That kills the Genesect, well, that does. Yeah. Well, Genesect resists grass, actually, so it doesn't. Oh, no, it you're does, quite yeah, right. Yeah. It's metal, which does resist grass. It I always forget grass, the resistance. Yeah. Very unusual. We haven't had grass in the meta in a long time, right? No, no, you are correct. <laughs> Has been pretty underrepresented. Uh, underrepresented. Repres there we go, we got there, there we are, yeah. We got, <laughs> we got there eventually. We got there. And there's the Giratina V hitting the bench as well. Douglas has showing the full breadth of their box deck. But it's, again, minus the Drapion, keeping that secret still. Yes, he definitely can't put the down while part of the peak is in play. Now, um, Douglas did draw into a Raihan. Um, so that would be a Gaia free card at some point. Ops not to play it this turn. No, just going to Trinity Nova into that. 180 damage and then gets to attach Ooh. some energy. But it's going to go on that Giratina V and maybe one on the Superior V as well? Or? Yeah, I quite like this play, actually, thinking about Ooh. it. So if Duncan were to want to Psychic Leap, they're not going to take a KO unless they kind of do quite a lot of steps. Maybe they're going to need to get the Barrel yeah, into the active and then use some modifiers. 
So uh, is it worth Psychic Leaping? Probably not, but then it leaves them open to the Drapion, right? Yeah, Psychic Leap would be, what, Boss Barrel and then, what, three power tablets? Couldn't even be choice, but it has to be power tablets. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to be an option. No, I think it's too many moving parts. Yeah. Like, too much to expect. So it's not impossible, no, but not it's impossible, but it's, but it's a lot to expect. We are going to see the escape rope being played now. This is Ooh. interesting. What is Douglas gonna going promote. to promote? Any one of those Pokemon can be KO'd, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's Mew. I think maybe Mew would be my choice. Think, yeah. Well, the, uh, the Arceus, Arceus or Mew, I think. I think, Superior, I think you've got to protect your heavier attackers, right? Although then again, Superior is not as good as Arceus V-Star in an attack, so yeah. I'm not sure. That's a really tough decision. As uh, Douglas does go for the Arceus. And do see that Judge. Now, that's what I was worried about, actually, for Douglas. Holding that Raihan now could be in a spot of bother. He's at the mercy of Judge, you know, in a bit of a court of law here. The yeah. see who, who the Judge favours, as it were. Duncan still kind of needs to uh, find a power tablet or some modifier, actually, to KO this Arceus V-Star in yeah. the active. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, or could actually retreat back into the Mew B Max. I think I had a choice put on it. It does, but then that Mew B Max has taken damage, so that could be KO'd as well. Yeah, I believe it's an Arceus V in the active, though, Shay. I think the V-Star's now on the bench due to the escape rope, so a little bit less for Mew to have to do to take a two-price KO this turn. Do you still need a damage modifier to hit 220 as we do see that yeah, power tablet being played? And I like this though, because that means you can keep your damage on the, the on the uh, VMAX, I should say, on the bench. As we do see that Techno Blast by a cross fusion strike. And let's see how the judge has treated Ooh, Douglas as Duncan goes out to three prize cards. What has he got in his hand? Oh, that doesn't look too shabby, you know. Still no path out, but an Iono. We've got the Biparal still in play. I think we've got some okay feeling card draw. There, attaching to the Giratina V, giving it its third energy. So it can attack now, but it isn't quite big enough. We probably want it to be a V star, right? Yeah, we, we need the V star really at some point. We're seeing Avery. Ooh. Ooh, Avery is so good against and a Mew. And vacuum as well, but, the, but they do have a damaged Mew. So do they want to leave that and not Avery yet? Mm, that is true, actually. That is true. Because Let's they see. can't psychic leap. Well, we are going to see the Star Birth being used. That's the first time we've seen, actually, in this best of three. Star Birth letting you grab any two cards from your deck and put them into your hand. Yeah, so finally we see the Stellar Star Birth showing that Arceus is indeed the legendary Pokemon and can go into the deck and grab two cards. And the lovely part about this is you also don't have to show your opponent because you're yeah. allowed to take whatever you want as long as you take two cards. That's all you have to prove to them. So again, we get some secrets. Opting to actually Ultra Ball away the Avery and Iona. So Avery isn't going to be on Douglas's game plan, at least for now. I think we are going to see a boss's orders as, as that was one of the star birth targets. We're probably going to try and remove that bench Mew V Max. And do you know what that means? Once that Mew V Max is gone, Drapion comes in to clean this game up. That's the thing. So although Douglas is looking like they're in a bit of a fishy situation, actually, this is beautiful. Yes, yes, that's what we like to see. They're going to bring it back, baby. Getting a KO on the Mew VMAX with still the secret knowledge of knowing that they can possibly take another one as long as Path eventually comes back out of play. Yeah, it's a real interesting scenario there to place the path to the peak, then you now make your own Drapion harder. Like, if Duncan doesn't replace that path, you can't Drapion. And there is I a world in which Duncan can still take KOs even under path. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how that pans out. I'm kind of I'm kind of liking the bluff of the path yeah. going, I don't, I don't have a Drapion. No, it's not. It doesn't. It's not there. <laughs> not at all. I promise. And actually, they have kind they have of, I think it's worked. It. Yeah. No, but I think it's worked yeah, it because it is, Duncan has now put their own path into the Lost Zone. There are, th there are three paths to the peaks of the Lost Zones. Uh, three. You and could so say that path to the peak is rather hard to walk up right now. It really is. <laughs> and so Duncan has put themselves in a situation where they may not be able to get another path to the peak into play, leaving Douglas wide open for that Drapion attack. There is a world, though, where Duncan can put his own path to the peak back down, though. <laughs> so hey, not quite it? out of the woods yet, as it uh, were, or not uh, quite off the peak. If they can find one, that's the thing. Two of their own are in the, are in the lost zone. There's a lot of card draw still to go. Only one Mew Max in play. So, yep, going for the next Mew V to allow themselves to draw more cards off those Genesects. So 
let's see what Duncan chooses to do there as Douglas just consults the discard pile. But yeah, you are you're correct. You are correct. Douglas has managed to hide that draft here. I mean, it could be an educated guess from Duncan, but the problem, well, I said a problem, a downside to playing four DTE mutes and a fusion, you haven't got a choice realistically about uh, playing my draft, and you have to attack the free prize Pokemon unless you use Psychic Leap. So you kind of, or your only defense is just trying to leave Path to the Peak in play as much, because Path to the Peak would turn off that Wild Style ability, making it so where Drapion needs four energy to attack, which makes it a lot less likely. As we do see a fusion strike system, Ooh. Boss's orders, boss's orders. Oh. oh, goodness, we don't want to oh. see that. And that, that's a really clogged hand right now. It is. Duncan can't play any of those cards. They can play one supporter, and that is it. No, no, leave him alone. Okay, <laughs> all right. No, it's all right. They went to the mute. They changed their mind. But this is what I said earlier about how he managed to fill his bench without playing Battle VIP pass. They will come into the hand eventually, as he has two in the hand now. I, I've played a lot of mute. I know how this works. As we are going to see a few strike system for one. Now, as we see the bottom orders onto the Mew EX, let's see what this Genesect's oh, gonna do for one Duncan. Card. Please be playable. Please to be, be a playable. Is no. it was a path to the peak? Look oh my goodness that. gracious. That was unbelievably lucky. Right now, Duncan might not put that down. He doesn't know about the draft. No, he, he might doesn't. Not know. He's not the wiser. And I think the I think the bluff from Douglas was yeah, Oh, he bluffed work. it! Yeah. He bluffed it successfully! He doesn't know! Doesn't oh my know. goodness gracious! He and can't find the Drapion though. Look at that hand. Oh no! He hasn't got access to but it. But he's got Bibarel. He's got four cards and he's going to have to attach oh. an energy and then draw two of this industrious inside. It's going to be oh. a very important two. How we well traded is this Bibarel? Lost no. Cities! And that, that's Duncan's final path to the pizza. So maybe that's why they decided to keep it because the mm. other one, the last one, is in the prize cards. So we do see the Lost City come okay. down. But we know that Duncan okay. has another boss's orders in hand. We know that. Ooh. So I'm fairly certain if there is no Hannah Shot, which we know there isn't, Duncan just has to boss it. Or oh, wait, we'll have to actually switch around to reset that Techno Blast, actually. So not quite out of the woods yet. But not out of the woods. And also. I mean, they've got to either switch around or make a new Mew VMAX. They're going for the power tablet, and they still have that really clogged hand. And they do have the Forest Seal Stone. Ooh. V Star hasn't been used Ooh. yet, so just going to have to V Star for an escape rope or a switch. Here and come the puzzle pieces. What, do, do they have any Judge left or like Roxanne? Maybe it's worth refreshing their hand. No, I think they just they just play the switch card yeah. or they retreat switch card back to the Mew V, boss anything with that power tablet. And that's the all cheap, superior, right? and that oh, should wrap yeah. it up. So now we're going to see the switch cart retreat, oh, switch my cart goodness. back in to reset the Techno Blast. Here we go. Boss's order is going to rear his head. Oh, no. And that Sophia. is the game. Oh. And there Gosh. we go. Mu V Max doing Mu. in the top cut of this tournament as of round 11 here we go eight oh well that'll be nine one one what a record nine one one the march towards top eight bear in mind it's duncan's first time at laic and he's doing a fantastic job mm -hmm. in a fantastic position as we do see the replay here going over to douglas's turn two i believe this was and he didn't quite draw the cards he needed and duncan duncan was quick to capsulize did you see that cram i think this was a tails this was a three if i remember correctly yeah, yeah there it was uh, but it didn't matter Dun duncan would still be able to take five cards and apply that pressure douglas 
you know, it did stabilize and it did get out the Arc V Star eventually, but you could argue it's a little bit too late. And Mew V Max just loves two prize attacking deck because Mew V Max has no problems swinging taking two prize cards at a time. And as part of the peaks, managed to just delay the inevitable, really. And Duncan was able to just fire them off. Duncan got very close, though. If he was able to find a uh, Drapion V on this uh, next turn after concluding this Trinity Nova KO, he actually would have won. And we've been going to a game three. But unfortunately, he couldn't find the Drapion. Duncan was just reducing that hand size all the time. And that clutch, very clutch there, Fusion Strike system, closed out the game. It did. Dunk. Yep. And that's the beauty of Mew, right? So consistent, so sleek. Every movement seems so agile and defined. Really a truly masterful deck, and I can definitely see why it is our current world champion deck. That's a good point. It's the world champion deck. Yeah. I think the only thing that's going to slow down Mew quite honestly is rotation. It's how many Mew counters have we seen? The very first one was My Chenna. That gets played in your deck, funnily mm -hmm. enough, doesn't yep. it? Yeah. Um, then we had we had Dark Cry V Star in that same set. Yeah, we're still we, going. Then we had a Hisuian Samurai mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Then we had Klefki, I think. Was that the next one? No, Drapion was Drapion, the next one. Drapion, I think, was Sorry, next. Which, you could argue it's the best one. Yeah. Then we had Clef Key. Yeah. Then we had Spirit Tomb as well. That's six, six. hard count. Look, you can't even six. count that on one hand. Need two no. hands. Need and two hands. Need two hands, need two hands for that. Six. Oh and my te goodness. Technically, there are two Moltres, right? There's the single <laughs> prize out, and there's the there's the uh, V as well. Yeah. So there's 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 two. So it's seven, seven, seven. Outrageous. And still, Mew prevails. Yeah, it's just that, especially in the DTE view, a lot different to the Fusion, but it's just that, I always say in card games, the equalizer is if your opponent can't play the game, it doesn't matter if they have the options. Yeah. They won't be able to 